Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9. In this video, we're going to be going over Gallon Balor Hummus EX3, uh, part of the new Critical Threat event, and we will go ahead and jump right in. Um, taking a look at what he has here, the only sigil that is going to help you is Diamond Sigil. He's weak to wind, strong to earth and water. Uh, he can't really be debuffed in any meaningful way that I can see. He uses earth element physical abilities, so earth resistance and physical defense will be good. And you need wind damage to deplete his gauge. And it says wind elemental physical attacks are effective. So primarily we'll be using Sephiroth as our wind damage dealer. And I will show you how I've set him up. So we're using OB9 Dark Heavens. And I have just poured a lot of stuff into trying to get this because wind is like my weakest element. So I uh, knew that Sephiroth was kind of going to be my wind guy. And that's what I've got here. Other than that, I have Torn Wing for backup physical defense because he will be debuffing physical defense a lot. I'm not sure that this is absolute must, but uh, probably the weaker your team is or the harder this fight is for you, the more this is going to come in handy. These are all uh, physical attack stat six, and for sub equipment, this is physical attack um, potency and HP physical attack and wind potency, wind potency and HP. And so you can see here, he's got quite a healthy amount of HP, just under 4,000 physical attack. And he is sitting at a level seven wind potency right on the dot. And that's gonna be good for 85% extra damage. Other than that, we are using his original Halloween costume for the wind mastery for 20% more damage. And again, this is why Sephiroth is my main wind damage dealer. Coming over here, we have Aerith for heals. We also have her floral wand to uh, do the wind breach, and this will stack up to mid. This is also very necessary because you need to deplete that gauge as much as possible before he rushes you so that he doesn't do, you know, 12 or 13,000 damage to you. He'll also give himself a wind shield, and you'll need to deplete that at least to a certain extent in order to actually do meaningful enough damage uh, to deplete that gauge. So that's what we're using that for. Um, all Other than that, she has an ability to do wind, uh, AoE heal, single target heal. The single target heal is not really a huge deal here. It's just that there's just not much else I really needed to put on her. For sub equipment, we have HP, we have heal and debuff extension, we have HP and debuff extension. And the reason for that is ultimately we've got her to uh, level three, 80% bonus to debuff. And this debuff extension is going to be good for keeping the wind breach applied just as long as possible. All right, last we have Matt. He's kind of the, um, I think he's like the key piece here to why we're able to do this with this team, especially being, you know, well under the recommended power. We are using Centipede, I've got OB1, so not very fancy, and you could do this, I think, with just a regular five star. The only difference between that and OB1, a little bit of heal R ability, 8% um, more, I think, healing potency and maybe two seconds extra on the duration, uh, which we don't really care that much about the physical defense duration. We're mostly bringing this for the AOE um, phys physical defense up to counteract the physical defense AOE down that the boss is gonna be doing. Um, other than that, it is actually pretty good for the heal boost too, uh, because he will do some single target moves, so having a single target heal is pretty decent. The other thing that Matt has that's really useful is Killer Hornet here with the Diamond Break, and the reason that the Diamond Break's important, you don't have to use a Diamond Break, I don't believe, but it will allow you, like for Sephiroth, for example, to get more wind damage off during the Sigil Break phase if you have something like this that can break extra diamond sigils so that he's not having to do sigil hits during that phase. Uh, we're using Gigantic Shield. Again, physical defense debuff is a big deal. He, all of his moves are physical and a lot of them are AOE. So this is just kind of an insurance policy and it helps things out. Uh, Nameless here is for HP. This is for basically just healing potency. And this is actually healing potency and earth resist. We actually get to use earth resist for the first time, uh, at least the first time I've ever needed it. So that is the team that we are going in with just under 238,000. Like I said, Sephiroth's pretty much doing probably about 95% of the damage here. 
uh, with these two being supporting casts. Without further delay, we will get into the fight. Jumping into the Galen Balor fight, the first thing he's going to do is immediately go into a sigil phase. So just kind of debuff him once with Aerith, jump back over to Matt, use Killing Slash. That'll do a lot of the sigils there. You can go ahead and Gale Strike with Sephiroth and uh, just make sure you break the sigils. But I'm trying to prep him to do kind of as much damage as possible. It's a very long fight because it heals himself and stuff like that later. So we're just trying to sneak in as much extra damage as we can. Towards the end of this interrupt, you're gonna wanna switch stances because he will do a rush with about a one second delay as soon as that interrupt is over. This is pretty good though because it, you know, it, it mitigates a lot of the damage. Notice that we all have high potency defense debuff, so we're going to need to take care of that. But Matt will do that automatically, so I'm just going to instead focus on getting down that wind shield so that Sephiroth can start doing as much wind damage as possible, because I promise you, it does not matter if you have full HP and full, you know, high potency defense buff. If that rush gauge is, you know, high like this, it will wipe you almost guaranteed. So, just trying to get in as much of that damage as possible, and you can actually get in a little bit more if the AI Sephiroth, if I didn't let him cast that defense de uh, buff, we would have probably taken about a thousand less damage per unit. But that's alright, uh, we're, we're good here for a while, just kind of get in a couple heals, and um, you should be pretty good. Then go back to doing the same thing you're doing before, which is, basically with Matt, you're mostly curing and recovering circle and then with everybody else you are debuffing his wind with Aerith using the gale strike with Sephiroth or whoever your main wind damage dealer is just to kind of chunk him down as much as possible. Here this meteorite ability by the way is targeted so we can see that it is going to hit Matt. This is helpful and also if you did bring Torn Wing or a single target uh, defense up caster you could use that to some benefit knowing that, you know, high potency, for example, he'll take a little bit less damage than if it's just medium. At this point, I'm going to speed up a little bit because this part of the fight is just a little bit boring. And what I'm cutting out here, or at least speeding up through, is just basically us kind of rinsing and repeating, trying to keep up the wind debuff, do the wind damage with Sephiroth. He's going to kind of alternate between doing some single target physical attacks and some AOE physical attacks. Um, with the setup that we have though, with both Matt and Aerith able to single and AOE heal, we really don't have to worry almost at all about this. I can just kind of switch stances to defense. And as long as they have the ATB, the, a the AI will automatically do the heals. Uh, but after a while, he will start another gauge here. And it's coming up right about now. So here you see it, the rush charge. Uh, this time, though, he did not buff his wind resistance. So it's really easy to kind of just crush through him here. And if you deplete the entire gauge, he actually goes into a stun where you can just, again, get in as much DPS as you can. And really nothing fancy here. You're just kind of doing as much wind damage as you can while waiting for this rush to come. And then, if you can, trying to time the recovery circle on Matt so that you don't take quite as much damage when he actually does the rush. You can see here uh, that did significantly less damage than before. Mend is the point where, like, this is why this battle takes so long because he's basically healing himself while you're trying to break him. And what I was trying to do here was with Matt save up some ATB, but I actually the AI again kind of cast something right before. Um, so what I would kind of recommend is after that second rush gauge. Um, right before, you know, you see the timer for his AoE move, his rush go off, I would just get on Matt and kind of hold ATB, because I think it would be really nice if you could do a couple of these diamond sigil breaks right off the bat. Um, one, obviously you'll break him faster, and, you know, basically that's just going to make him heal less. Uh, and then this whole time I'm just using my other party members to do damage because they don't really have a really great way of breaking the diamond sigils 
So, that's one of the, like I said, main reasons that we brought Matt. This rush I was a little bit caught off guard by, uh, but again, not really a big deal, especially since we've had plenty of heal and everything, so we have not really needed to use any of these limits. I figured I'd go ahead and just let them go here. Uh, this at least frees them up to use their ATB to do some damage. And, you know, since he's healed himself up to like 70% HP, I really, uh, <laughs> I guess it was, you know, eager to get back in and start just kind of damaging him down. At this point now, you're just kind of going back into more of the same almost autopilot mode. He's going to do these meteorite clusters, which again, it shows you who he's targeting. But we have so much defense up, so much heal that we're just really not having to worry too much about it. Uh, and they only do about 3,500 damage. Uh, so nothing that's going to put us in a uh, precarious situation. Now here, you're about to see him do Storm Shield again. That is your signal that he's going to win resist up, which is going to be preceded by another gauge that you have to break. So I would immediately hop over onto Aerith as soon as you see the Storm Shield sign and just get ready to debuff his wind resistance so that Sephiroth can start taking massive chunks out of his wind gauge. And again, you should pretty easily be able to break this one, I think, too, before he gets his rush off, which will give you just more of a window to uh, DPS him down. And we're going to kind of speed this up again, because this is just kind of a long fight, but not because it's particularly difficult, just because of the general nature of the mechanics with him healing himself and you kind of having to keep up with the uh, debuffs because if you don't uh, if you don't take care of those defense down debuffs I can tell you you know his, his attacks do a lot more damage and it gets a lot harder to manage uh, but with the way we've set up for it here like I said just really not any problems especially if you've made it this far I, I would say by the time you make it past his first uh, big rush with that first gauge, you're probably in the clear. So again, he's just kind of cycling through the same moves with that meteorite crusher, etc., etc., and we're just damaging him down. <laughs> I have sped this up to 50% faster and probably could have gone even a little bit further, but we are coming down to the home stretch, so. It's about over. He got off one last meteor cluster, and uh, that is going to be about all she wrote before we hit the last Gale Strike here. And I think that will end this battle. Or maybe we're going to need to. <laughs> okay, there you have it. That's Galley B EX3. Hopefully this helped you clear it. If it did, subscribe for future content. If you already are subscribed, you know I appreciate each and every one of your support. You can also come to my Discord. There's a link in my profile. Uh, we chat about the game. We share insights, that kind of stuff. You know, the typical stuff you do in a Discord. As always, thanks for watching.